It might sound silly when you're starting out in Dwarf Fortress, but telling your dwarves where to put things is actually hugely important to building a successful fort. The way you do this is by using stockpiles. To designate an area to be used as a stockpile, press P to bring up the stockpile menu. Here you'll see a list of different kinds of stockpiles with a letter next to each one. Let's start by pressing W to make a wood stockpile. Move your cursor to a place close to your carpenter's workshop, press enter, draw a rectangle, and press enter again. The area inside the rectangle will now be designated as a stockpile for wood, which means that dwarves with the hauler labor enabled will try to fill the stockpile with any available wood on the map. Be careful with your stockpile size. If you make it too large and there are lots of logs on your map, your hauler's time will be filled with moving logs trying to fill the stockpile. Arguably, the two most important stockpiles are the refuse stockpile and the corpse stockpile. The refuse stockpile is essentially a garbage dump. And since garbage dumps are nasty, you'll want to put it in a place where your dwarves don't have to see it if they're not using it. But not so far away that the dwarves carrying garbage will spend all their time walking back and forth. The corpse stockpile is exactly what it sounds like. It is not a graveyard. Rather, it is a place where unclaimed corpses are unceremoniously dumped to rot. It too will make your dwarves unhappy if they see it too often, so make sure it's not some place where they're likely to see it accidentally. You should set up corpse and refuse stockpiles relatively early in your game so nasty garbage and dead bodies don't accumulate in random places around your fort. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but it's worth mentioning that your dwarves should be buried in coffins or caskets to keep their friends and family from freaking out. Also, they will eventually come back as ghosts and haunt everybody if you don't inter their bodies or memorialize them in some way. The default stockpiles you see as options in the P menu are only commonly used variants of a nearly infinite list of possible stockpile configurations. If you press T for custom stockpile settings, you'll see a list of types of possible stockpiles on the left. You can enable one or more of these with the E key and disable with the D key. For starters, this allows us to create stockpiles with more than one kind of item in them. When you're first starting out, you might want a multi-purpose stockpile for things your dwarves have brought with them on the journey. So with the custom stockpile option, you can make one stockpile that will hold furniture, weapons, and other miscellaneous items you may have brought with you. You can also use custom stockpiles to make the contents of a stockpile very specific. When a stockpile type is enabled, it usually reveals a couple of lists with even more options for what you want in your stockpile. Let's say we wanted a stockpile where our dwarves could store nothing but finely crafted porcelain doors. To start, we would go to Furniture Siege Ammo and select E to enable that category. By default, all materials and quality types are allowed, so we want to press B to block all. Then under Type, highlight Doors and press Enter. Under Stone Clay, highlight Porcelain and press Enter. And under Core Quality, toggle Finely Crafted. If you want to allow qualities higher than finely crafted, you'll have to toggle each of them individually. Finally, go to total quality and press P to permit all variants of total quality. The food stockpile has a helpful but confusing subsetting for cooked meals called prepared food. If you want a stockpile with only prepared food in it, you'll have to toggle off all the other options and then allow prepared food with you. Once you've finished fiddling with the settings, you can go back to the stockpile menu and make your custom stockpile by pressing the C key. Once you've created a stockpile, you can queue over it to see more customization options. You can increase or decrease the number of barrels and bins a stockpile can use with ER and CV respectively. You can also allow a stockpile to use a certain number of wheelbarrows by pressing W and then typing the number of wheelbarrows you want to allow. Wheelbarrows allow dwarves to move heavy things like rocks with no speed penalty, but if you have wheelbarrows enabled, it will limit the number of dwarves bringing things to the stockpile by the number of wheelbarrows. Also, each wheelbarrow enabled for a stockpile will take up one square of the stockpile that can't be occupied by anything else, so be sure to plan accordingly. Another useful feature of this menu is to have your stockpile give and take to another stockpile or to a workshop. A stockpile can be used to feed a particular workshop or another stockpile with the Give option. To enable this, while you are queued over the stockpile, select G and then move your cursor to the workshop or other stockpile that you want the first stockpile to feed. For instance, if you want your mason to make things out of only marble, 
You could set up a rock stockpile with only marble permitted, and then have that stockpile give to your mason's workshop. The take option works basically the same way, but in reverse. We're almost done, but there is one important bug to be aware of when it comes to using your stockpiles. If you have a stockpile where things are stored in bins or barrels, and you change the settings on that stockpile, the things stored in the bins or barrels will be lost. Not that they'll disappear, but your dwarves will essentially forget about them and not be able to access them. A quick workaround is just to erase the whole stockpile using X in the stockpile menu, and then make a new one in the same place using your new settings. If any of this strikes you as confusing, don't feel bad. The stockpile menus are just one of many examples of Dwarf Fortress' very confusing UI. However, if you can manage to find your way through the intricacies of the stockpile menu, you are well on your way to being a truly effective Dwarf Fortress player.